Hello, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're going to talk about use of strobes for wide angle shots. In general, this is a little more tricky. Uh, you can't really hide the background. You want to find a good subject, something in the foreground and the background. And um, you, in general, we want to get low and shoot up. We want to avoid mergers, avoid amputations, things we've talked about in composition. My main problems with wide angle have, again, been good old backscatter problems, despite trying to position the strobes outward. Sometimes the subject in the foreground is still blurred. I have try, trouble getting good focus on the subject in the foreground. And sometimes my lighting is uneven. Either it's not even in the foreground, or it's too bright in the foreground, or dark in the background. But we're going to show a few sam uh, examples of this now, if we'll tune into the computer here. Okay. So, when using strobes for wide angle, we generally will adjust our ISO setting and shutter speed for exposure and lighting in the background. All right, We adjust our aperture for artistic effect. Uh, if you're just shooting something you know, four or five feet away, you can open up your aperture. That way you get good exposure. You can you have a, a faster shutter speed, speed and you don't get uh, blur from motion. But if we're using like something in the foreground, like a close focus wide angle type scenario, in general we want a little bit slow, a, a little bit of a, um, a smaller aperture to have better depth of field so we can focus both on the foreground and the background. Uh, so what we use our strobes for in wide angle is generally to illuminate the foreground. Obviously uh, the strobes don't go more than three or four or five feet underwater so we're going to use the strobes to bring back some color, clarity, and contrast in the foreground. And the strobe by that I mean strobe power Okay, strobe to subject distance and the angle and the position, the, the part of the cone of light that we're using to illuminate the subject. So here I've illuminated the uh, coral in the foreground to bring some color and contrast and clarity where there's this shark swimming in the background and I expose the shark by adjusting the ISO and the um, shutter speed. And I use my aperture, I kind of made it a little smaller so I had good enough depth of field to focus both on the foreground and the background. All right, so here's another example here. Um, uh, a strobe, this was at about 100 feet, my dive buddy and a wreck. Uh, I just used a little bit of strobe uh, exposure to bring some color, some vibrant color, and it adds a little bit of dimension and interest to this uh, object. Uh, if you use one strobe, that's okay. It's good to use a diffuser to have as broad of a cone of light you can, but sometimes you'll end up with uneven lighting, especially with real wide angle or like a fisheye lens. So here you have too much lighting here, not enough over there. Another example of too much lighting here, not enough over there. You have to be mindful of you, you know, possibly using two strobes or your strobe positioning. Uh, whereas with two strobes, and if they're carefully positioned equidistant from each part of the coral, you can get nice illumination of the foreground. And again, adjust, use your ISO setting, setting and shutter speed to illuminate the background. Uh, here's a typical example of how I'll have my strobes positioned for wide angle. A little bit above to, mim to mimic the position of the sun, um, and then out a, f a couple, two or three feet, and point it, if anything, a little bit out and away from the subject to minimize backscatter. Here's a top side view. You have to also be careful that your strobes are behind the dome port. If they're in front of it, you'll, you can sometimes catch the strobes, the edge of the strobes and the edge of your picture, which is pretty distracting. Now, for close focus, wide angle, that's why we want to focus on something in tight and then also have something in the background. It's really a cool technique because it shows a subject and it shows the context of the reef or the position of the reef and other things, maybe a diver or something else in the background. But for close focus, wide angle, we, we need to pull our strobes in a little tighter and again have them pointed outward a little bit to minimize backscatter. Okay, so here's a diagram showing the strobe positioning uh, from above. You have the strobes pulled in tighter. So with the cone of light, it does catch the subject in the foreground to illuminate it and not illuminate the intervening water column. That minimizes backscatter. And then again, we use our ISO setting and shutter speed to get good exposure in the background. And then we usually have to keep our aperture somewhat small to have good depth of field. And here's a couple examples of a sea anemone uh, with a close focus wide angle using that strobe positioning. We have good exposure and lighting in the foreground and background. 
Here is my dive buddy. We are using the strobes to illuminate the angelfish in the foreground and the ISO setting and shutter speed to get proper exposure in the background. Again, with a somewhat small aperture to have good depth of field so everything is in relatively good focus. And here's another picture of a coral in the foreground with my dive buddy and under surface of the water in the background. All right, thank you very much for tuning in. This concludes strobe positioning and strobe tips for wide angle. Thank you.